I came five minutes early so that people who can get notified of this in time. So we'll start the storytelling at 5.30. Till then, I'll be online and I'll be playing you some Japanese songs. You would have heard it in Tamil and other Indian languages, but Japanese you would have never heard. It's 5.30, uh, we can get started, I guess. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for Katabumi uh, for creating this opportunity of uh, seven days of storytelling. And I'm really happy uh, to be part of this and to be sharing stories from Japan, which is a special place for me. Uh, and uh, it has been a great uh, two days of storytelling before me uh, that has raised the stake to uh, upper level. So I hope I can be as good as the uh, uh, past two days of storytelling. So please bear with me uh, because this is the first time I'm telling for kids, I, say, I guess. So when the poster, if you guys have seen the poster that was designed for this, uh, Aditya first has put as stories from Japan. So I asked her to change that to kids stories from Japan because I know when people see my face and stories, I don't think they're expecting kids' stories. 
<laughs> so I usually have told stories for uh, the grown-up kids, not the actual kids' kids, I guess. So this is the first time I'm telling stories for the actual kids. Uh, for this, I've chosen uh, a couple of stories from um, 14th, 15th century uh, Japanese old uh, folk tales. So these have been uh, very uh, culturally enriching stories when I was there in Japan. These are the stories we, I heard over there. These are the stories which I kind of have uh, used to understand Japanese way of thinking and uh, Japanese culture a little bit more, I guess. So uh, let's uh, give one minute for people, uh, more people to join here, and then we can start uh, the storytelling, I guess. So I had actually originally uh, planned for telling three stories, uh, three Japanese stories today. So I'll be, actually right now I'll tell two stories and see how much time is left. And today morning I saw a storytelling by Gita Ramanujan, if you guys know. She's one of the master storytellers in India. And uh, she had shared a story uh, from her childhood school times. So that kind of inspired me. And if there is time uh, after finishing these two uh, Japanese stories, I might have to tell a story that happened to me in my school. Uh, Aditya, I hope you don't mind that. <laughs> okay. So let's start with the uh, story. Uh, the first story is, uh, uh, old man and the dog. This is one of the most famous stories in Japan. So when you talk about folk tales, which is called Mukashi Banashi in uh, Jap Japan, this is the first story everybody talks about. Okay, let's go on and get started with the story. Long, long ago, so long ago, nobody can say how long ago, in a beautiful village, in the beautiful land of Shinchan, no, Japan, there lived a grandmother and grandfather. Our grandma and grandpa was really kind, happy uh, people. They were living in a village which was near a river and they were farmers. So they had a rice field. They used to work hard in the rice field. They daily go work in their farm, have rice, and with that rice, they used to make mochi. If you have, uh, if you know what's mochi, mochi is a Japanese sweet that is made of rice. So the uh, rice cake, the mochi is sweet, it's sticky, fluffy, and amazing to eat. Our grandma and grandpa, they used to make mochi. And the way they make mochi is, they put it in the mortar grinder. I don't know if you have seen this, the paddy field, people have this a grinder in this shape. They put the rice in it and they beat it with big log. It's called the mortar grinder. So they used to do that every day. And when they do that, they used to go, yo, shop, 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 yo, shop. That's their daily work. They used to make mochi, they used to get there, sell the mochi, and used to live with it. Now, one such day, they were creating such beautiful, tasty mochi. They were going, yo, shop, yo, shop, yo, shop, yo, shop, yo, shop. At that time, Grandma heard somebody crying. Grandma looked around. Grandpa, let's go find who is crying. I'm hearing somebody is crying. They followed the sound and near the river, they found this small, beautiful dog that was all wet and it was shivering in the cold. It was shivering and they looked at the dog. Grandpa picked it in the hand and he saw that the dog was white as white as clouds and it felt like a piece of cloud has come down and hits in his hand. He saw that and he fell in love with the dog immediately. They took the dog to their home, they wiped it, they covered it with a nice warm blanket and they gave food for the dog. 
and the dog ate the food. He liked it so much and slept for the night. And next day morning, when the dog woke up, he was all lively. He was all healthy. He was running around everywhere. And the grandma and grandpa, they know the dog is going to be part of their family. And they started living together. Now, when the dog is part of the family, it has to be named, right? So you have to give a name for it. Uh, can you guess what name the grandpa and grandpa gave to the dog? I will give you a hint. The dog was white. It was very healthy. And grandma and grandpa also liked Shincha. So what could be the name of the dog? You, if you guess the name, can you comment in the comment section? I will come back to the uh, name again. Now the dog was part of the family. They were all happy. They ate breakfast together. They ate lunch together. They ate dinner together. He even started working in the farm with the uh, grandma and grandpa. He used to take part in the mochi making on every day. You remember this mochi making song? They go, yo, sho, yo, sho, yo, sho, yo, sho. Now that the dog is part of it, the song became, yo, sho, wang, wang, yo, sho, wang, wang, yo, sho, wang, wang. Okay, the name of the dog. What's the name of the dog in Shincha? Say it is Shiro. Yes, exactly, Suraj. You guessed it right. So they named the dog as Shiro. Now Shiro is always happy. He's running around and he's always going wang wang. You know what's wang wang? How does a dog bark? What is some dog made when it bark? In English, we call it Bow bow. In Tamil, we call it lol 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 right? What's that in Japanese? In Japanese, it's called wang wang. I know, I know. You are thinking, how can a dog go wang wang? I'll tell you how. You know how? That's how it is. And Shiro was always happy. He was always going, wah, 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 wah. he is part of the family. He is happy. Now, one fine morning, grandma and grandpa still sleeping. But Shiro is awake. He wants to go somewhere. He went and woke up grandma, grandpa. He started pulling grandpa. Come, come, let's go, let's go. And he was like, putting his head down to the grandma, come, come, let's go, let's go, oh, no, 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 no. They're like, okay, okay, let's go, let's go. They woke up and he started to take them somewhere far away from the village. And they were, okay, where is Hiro taking us? Okay, let's follow him. He took them away from the village and they went far inside the forest. He took them to the forest. They were, okay, why are we in the forest? And Shiro, in the forest, he was sitting down in one place and he went, wah, 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 wah. and he started digging with the small pumps. He started digging. Wah, 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 wah. He started digging that. Grandpa, Shiro, why are you digging there? He said, dig, 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 dig. Wah, 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 wah. Grandpa, okay, let me try and dig here. So the grandpa, took the hair and he started digging. He started digging there and he dug, he dug and he dug and then dung, there was a metal sound. What is that? He dug some hole and he found lots and lots of gold there. There were tons of gold there. Grandma and Grandpa were so happy. Thank you, Shiro. Thank you to have given us so much gold. They carried all the gold to their house. They were no more poor. They became rich. They were so happy in their life. And they helped out all the villages as well. They gave food for people who needed food. They gave jobs in their farms. They lived so happily with all the gold and with Shiro. At that time, 
there was a greedy grandpa and grandma in the village. They saw, we need gold. It should not be with them. They had a plan. They came to our nice grandma and grandpa and told, Grandma, can we have the hero for one day? We need him to help us in the farm for one day. Can we borrow him for one day? Our grandma and grandpa being so nice, they are grateful. They said, please take him and please bring him in the evening. Okay. And the greedy grandpa took the dog and he put a leash in his dog. And then he dragged him. He dragged him. He dragged him into the forest. In the forest, the grandpa, the greedy grandpa, he took. Now, stupid dog, show me where the gold is. Is it here? And Shiro was very afraid. He was looking at grandpa, he was like, no, I don't know, mama, mama. And grandpa was, stupid dog, show me the gold. Is it here? But Shira was not moving. He was so afraid. He was sitting there. He was not moving at all. And grandpa lost patience and said, hi Shira, is the gold here? Can I dig here? And Shira said, mama. And he started digging. He started digging. And he started digging, started digging. There was no gold. Ah, he dragged him further into the forest. Hey, Shiro, is the gold here? No, no. He started digging, he started digging, and he started digging. And this went on for the whole day. From morning to evening, he was digging all over the forest. He dug up the whole forest, but no gold to be found. He got very irritated and got angry with Shiro. And he took his spear, he hit Hiro, and he left from the place. In the evening, our nice grandma and grandpa, they were waiting in the house. Oh, where is Shiro? We miss him so much. And our grandma, she didn't even have lunch without Shiro. She was waiting for Shiro. Let Shiro come in the evening. Let's have dinner together. And grandpa got so worried. He went to the greedy grandpa and he asked him, Where is Shiro? We miss him so much. Please give him back to us. And the, grand, the greedy grandpa told, I don't know that useless dog where he is. He was stupid. He didn't do any work for me. He is in the forest. Go find him. I don't know where he is. Grandpa got shocked. Oh my God, where is my dog? Grandpa and grandma went into the forest, searching for Shiro. Shiro, 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 where are you? They were trying to find Shiro here and there. And then finally, deep in the forest, Shiro was lying down, lifeless. They looked at Shiro, they got so sad. They took him to the house. They buried him behind their house, in the garden. And they were so tired. They were so sad, they didn't have dinner that day, they just slept. The next day morning, when they woke up, when we looked at the garden, there was a huge tree in the place where they buried Shiro. There was a huge tree, beautiful tree. It has beautiful white flowers in it. And our grandpa, our grandma saw that, hey, our Shiro has come back. Our Shiro has come back as a tree. Our Shiro has come back with us. They were so happy. They were so happy. And they started doing their daily work. They went to the farm and they started at creating the mochi. They went to the mochi. They went to the grinder and they started, yo, sho. That has changed, right? Yo, sho, wang, wang. Yo, sho, wang, wang. But there is no Shiro to tell wow, wow now. Oh, I don't know what to do. Then the grandpa got an idea. He went to the tree. He took some woods from the tree and he created a new grinder, which they can use for the uh, mochi making. And he also painted it white to be seen like Shiro. And he also write his name in that Shiro. So now, Every day when they are working, they are working with Shiro and Shiro is with them. 
So grandpa goes, yo, yo, grandma goes, wong, wong, yo, yo, wong, wong, yo, yo, wong, wong. They were happy again. Shiro was with them in spirit and they were continuing their happy lives. But they noticed something else. Whenever they use this Shiro grinder to make mochi, the rice they put, when they go, yo, yo, wong, wong, yo, yo, wong, wong, the rice becomes gold. Every time they do this, the rice becomes gold. And they were so happy about it. Thank you, Shiro. Thank you. You have given us so much and you are giving more to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And our greedy grandma and grandpa noticed this. Mm. We need the gold. How to get it? They devised a plan. We will steal that Shiro grinder. We'll take it to our house and we will make mochi. And with that mochi, we can convert that into gold and we can become rich. So they went to the grandpa's house. They stole the Shiro grinder. They put it in their house. They put all the rice inside and they went, yo isha, no. They are greedy. They went more good. More good, 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 more good. But the rice did not turn into gold. The rice turned into bugs, worms, scorpions, and snakes. The grandpa saw that and ah, oh, this is bad. This is not working for me. This is a bad grinder. He took his hands, axe, and he broke the grinder. He broke the grinder. He broke the grinder into firewoods, took it outside, and he burnt it. He burnt the whole grinder. Now in the evening, our nice grandpa, he doesn't find the Shiro grinder. Where did it go? He went around the village searching for the Shiro grinder, asking everybody, have you seen my Shiro grinder? Have you seen my Shiro grinder? And finally, the greedy grandpa hit. I burnt it. It's useless grinder. It was not turning anything into wild gold. This is waste. I burnt it. There is the uh, ash. Please take it. And our grandpa went and saw. He was very sad. And even the ashes, they were white as Shiro. He brought a big basket from home. He collected all the ashes in the basket and he was taking it home. On the way, there was wind. A wind blew and some of the ashes flew from the basket and it scattered around the trees. And those trees suddenly bloomed with pink, beautiful cherry blossom flowers. And those trees look beautiful. And grandpa saw that. That's our Shiro. The Shiro. Our Shiro has come back as cherry blossoms. The Sakura flowers. And they were really happy. He took some more ashes. And he threw on other trees. Let there be flowers, he told. And there was flowers. There was plain flowers everywhere. He put on more trees. Let there be flowers. Let there be flowers. And the whole village turned into pink, beautiful city. Everybody saw that. That became the most beautiful village in the whole country. Everybody was happy. Now, again, our greedy grandpa and grandma, they didn't like it a bit. They tell them, okay, our king has a garden. And that garden has a lot of trees and it does not have any flowers. Mm -hmm. If we take these ashes, take it to king and we put it in his garden, king will be happy and he will give us lots and lots of gold. Okay, so he went, gathered some ashes from the nice grandpa and the greedy grandpa went to the king. He went there and said, oh mighty king, I have the magic ashes. This ashes 
if it is scattered in the trees they will bloom instantly your garden has no flowers i can turn into beautiful garden king was like okay are you sure you can do that if you can do that i can give you anything you want and the green grandpa said almighty king when your garden is full of flowers i need lots and lots of gold from you and the king told ha 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 i can give you that if you make our, my garden bloom i'll give you more gold than you have seen ever in your life greedy grandpa was very happy he took the ashes and he put it in all the trees in the king's garden he said let there be flowers let there be flowers let there be flowers let there be flowers but there was no flowers all the tree turned black and ugly and when the king came and saw the garden he didn't like it a bit he said my garden has become more ugly you stupid grandpa you made it more ugly i'm very angry with you he called the minister and said put them in the prison i don't like them they go to prison he they were sent to the prison and back in the village our nice grandma and grandpa they heard about this story ah we should help them after all they are our villages so our nice grandma and grandpa they went to the king with some ashes and they told oh mighty king i have the actual ashes that will make your tree bloom can i try it please give me permission to try it and the king told grandpa there was one stupid grandpa already who tried that i don't believe this okay if you want to try please go ahead you cannot make it more ugly it's already so ugly so please go try it he said and our grandpa went to the garden he looked at it it was so ugly it was so black it was all very sad he took some ashes and he said let there be flowers let there be flowers let there be flowers let there be flowers and the whole garden turned into beautiful pink cherry blossom garden all the trees were bloom in full pink color the king came he saw the king wow this is the most beautiful garden i have ever seen grandpa thanks for this what do you want please tell me i'll give you everything you need lots and lots of gold i'll give it to you our grandpa told no king i don't paint any gold let me ask you one simple help the villager who you have put in the prison i want them to be released that's all i want i don't want anything else and he asked for that and he left home that day king decided to release the prisoners and that old grandpa and grandma they were released from the prison when they were released from the prison they went straight to our nice grandma and grandpa's house and they said we are very sorry we would never be greedy again we will work hard we will be lovely to people we will be good people please forgive us forgive us for whatever we have done and we will never be greedy that children that's the end of the story never be greedy in your life did you like the story how was it thank you if you give a Two minutes time. I'll have some water and continue with the next story. <coughs> okay, let's start our next story. Long, long ago, so long ago, nobody can say how long ago. Come on, you can do it with me. Long, long ago, so long ago, nobody can say how long ago. In the beautiful land of Shinja, yes, Japan. There was this set of beautiful villages, and all these villages were near the beautiful mountain Fuji. There's this huge mountain Fuji. I don't know if you have seen that. 
go see go go to google search for mount fuji it is one of the most beautiful mountain in japan and this villages were around this beautiful mountain mount fuji and they had this privilege of watching mount fuji every day and they were so happy everybody was so happy everybody was so content in those villages but something happened one day one fine day there was a huge fire monster the fire monster was near the village and it started moving towards the village and all the villagers saw that and they were so afraid oh this is so huge it's even huge it's bigger than the mount fuji they were all so afraid they were starting to running away they were start to run away from the fire monster and the fire monster moved into the village burning everything in the path and people who were able to run from the fire village and they were able to run away but people who were very slow was burned by the fire monster it was burning everything so the villages from this village moved to the next village to be farther from the fire monster but the fire monster was not stopping it was moving forward and it was burning all the villages on the way and the villages from the next village moved to the farthest village to the next to the next but the fire monster was never stopping it was burning all the villages on the way and they were all moving forward and everybody was so afraid of the fire monster oh my god what should we do and they were left with one final village there was only one last village left and everybody from all the other villages have gathered there and all of their villages were burnt by this fire monster they were so afraid of it they don't know what to do and the village leader he decided okay let us go ask help from the king so two of us two of us from the village let's go ask the king and he has the mightiest army in the whole world the king will bring his army and kill the fire monster forever and everybody thought this is a good idea let's go and ask the king so two of them from the village went to the king's palace and he said oh mighty lord we have a huge fire monster in our village please help us please send your army to defeat that and king was ha ah, what monster no monster is bigger than my mighty army i can defeat it easily let me see it and he came out of the palace he stood out of the palace he looked at the fire monster and he was that's huge he went to the palace and was that was huge he don't know what to do he was afraid of the fire monster too so he called his minister minister gather all the mighty soldiers from all over the country and go fight the fire monster he told and then he said okay king we will do that you cannot disobey the king right so the minister was also actually afraid of that fire monster but to follow the king of his order he gathered all the soldiers he went to fight the fire monster they came out of the palace and they looked at the monster and the soldiers ran away they don't want to fight this monster they don't want to die it was so huge and with every soldier running away the fire monster was growing bigger the fire monster was going bigger 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 and it's becoming huge everybody was afraid and at that time there was a small kid he was 10 years old he was a small kid in the village he came to the king and said king i will kill the fire monster with king <laughs> my mightiest of soldiers couldn't kill the monster how can you kill that and you no king i will try and here means i can do that he told king okay fine if you want to try you can try and he sent two soldiers with him soldiers if he is getting too close to the fire monster if you, if you think he is getting killed bring him back 
I don't want any innocent kid to be killed by the fire monster. And the kid with two soldiers went out of the palace and they saw the fire monster. The king was standing in front of the palace and he saw the fire monster. But the two soldiers who came with him, they were not to be seen anywhere. They have run away already. And the king saw the fire monster and he did one thing which nobody else has ever done so far. He took a step towards the fire monster. And with that step, the fire monster grew a little smaller. And he took another step. With that, the fire monster grew a little smaller. And with each step he is taking towards the fire monster, it started becoming smaller, 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 smaller. And by the time the kid was near the fire monster, it has become a small flame like the one in Canada. And the kid blew it off. It went away. And there was ashes everywhere. And the fire monster was talking through the ashes to the kid. And the kid asked, Oh, the mighty fire monster, who are you? What's your name? And the fire monster told him, Oh, the bravest kid of all, my name is Fear. And when you run away from your fear, it grows bigger. It becomes stronger than you. And when you face your fear and walk towards your fear, the fear becomes powerless. It becomes smaller. And you can conquer your fear. That, children, is the end of the second story. Hope you liked it. This is one of my most favorite story of all. This has given me so much of inspiration in my life. Let me have another sip of water before I start the next story. Okay, so I was going to tell one more story from Japan. Uh, as my third story, but as I told in the beginning, I heard this uh, life experience of one of the master storyteller, uh, Gita Ramanujan, today morning. And I wanted to tell one of my uh, childhood school experiences as a story. Uh, this is just for fun, like kids who are listening, there's no moral in this. Uh, you promise me you forget right after uh, listening to this story. Okay? Okay. So I was in my high school. Uh, at that time and my favorite uh, period my favorite class was mathematics right yeah so mathematics so that period come right came right before the lunch right so you are in the math class and you're waiting for the lunch bell and you're already hungry so you're all, most of the times you are just thinking about your lunch rather than listening to the math class, right? And at this point, I was sitting in the second row in the class and there were like six, seven more rows behind me. And most of the guys, most of the boys and most of the girls in the class were already hungry. Their stomach has started making sounds <laughs> during this time, right? And in the back bench, there was this guy called Saravana. And his mother makes the most tasty idli and chili powder. I don't know if you've heard about this. Idli, most of you know. Have you heard of travel idli? The idli dipped in ghee and dipped in chili powder and put it in a different box, let it soak for a few hours, then you eat it. Ah. That's heaven. That's the most tastiest food you can ever have. And the surroundings mother, she makes the most tastiest idli. And when he brings idli, he never had lunch in school because we always steal it, right? And 
in the past, we could suddenly smell that idli. Right? The math class is going on, and we could see from bottom of the table, someone has taken his stiffen words and started eating the idli. And it's so delicious that it's so fragrant food. You, I, we can smell it from the second row that someone is eating idli at the back, right? So, oh my God, we are hungry. We need it. Then I'm passing signals. Okay, pass the different box to the front. Pass the different box to the front. Okay. So it from the last bench, it went to the next bench, next bench, this bench. And by the time it reached my row, the different box was empty already. There was no more idli left. And we were so disappointed. We were like, come on, there is no idli. What are we doing? We are hungry now. And the boy sitting next to me, Venkat, he was the most disappointed. He said, oh my God, I'm so hungry. My stomach is taking so. What should I have? I don't know. What will they have? He asked me, what do you have in your different box? I said, I don't think I have idli. I probably might have sambar rice, but I don't think you can eat it now. He said, okay, what else you have? I used to have this carrier with multiple different boxes in there. So he said, I might have aplam. So aplam? Aplam is good enough. I can have aplam. And I took one of them and opened it and there was aplam. The guy who was sitting next to me is Venkat. He took the apple. You know, apple is not idli, right? So you cannot eat same as idli. What he did? He took the apple and it. The whole class could hear it. <laughs> he eating apple. And the math teacher who was on the board, she heard it. And she turned up. Who is it? I could smell some food. I could hear somebody eating aplam. Who is eating aplam? I, he was eating. But I was having the different box in my hand. I was terrified. And I was like, looking all around like this. And she saw straight at me. And said, Santosh, are you eating? Are you eating? Said, no, ma'am, I'm not eating. And she came down. And she was walking towards my desk. I got so afraid. I wanted to close the different box and put it inside. I, I was trying to do that. And there was a lot. It's a ever silver, like it's the stainless steel different box, right? And he was making noise. And finally, I tried to manage to close it and put it in my box. And I was like, no, ma'am, I don't have. And the man came, looked at that, and said, okay. Santosh, you are not eating. And the whole class kind of was laughing at it. And the last guy, Saravanan, who was having the different box in his hand, and he was laughing, he dropped the different box down. And it went down, 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 straight to the math teacher. She saw that, ah, Saravan, you and your famous idiot, get out of my class. And he was standing out of the class the whole day. That was a funny incident. I remember when I heard Gita Ramanujam's story. Sorry, Aditya, I had to share this here. Thank you. It was a pleasure telling my stories, sharing my stories to all of you. Thank you. Be safe. Be home. Wash your hand constantly. Thank you for listening.